Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. We've got Stevie Craig and Ian here to answer your tweets. You've been sending them in. And the first one is for Stevie Nicol. Stevie, rank in order of how much you hate <laughs> England, Manchester United or the dentist? Oh, well, the dentist is thought. That tells you how much I dislike <laughs> the other two. I've got to say Man United probably would be the top England second. Even though you had them ahead of Liverpool this season, at the beginning yes. of the season. Yes. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah, there was no emotion involved in that. <laughs> All right. That's why. Fair enough. Uh, the other guys could probably, well, not Ian as much, but Craig could probably weigh in on that well, one. England, Manchester United or the dentist, in order of which you dislike most? I only dislike the dentist. <laughs> <laughs> I don't dislike England or Man United, unlike him. I'm not. I'm not a hater. Yes, Stevie. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. He does. I'm not a hater. <laughs> <laughs> Just telling it like it is. That's all it is. Oh, that's fine. All right. I'm not Craig, a hater. Explain the technique of your beautifully chipped goal against Norway in the 1998 World Cup. The technique. Well, the technique is I'd no other option, <laughs> basically, because. Uh, when the ball came over the top of the centre halves and bounced, it really only left me with one option. So think about it if you're a, if you play golf, it's just like hitting a soft chip. So just on that occasion, I managed to get it right under the uh, under that spotlight. So yeah, it's not, not him, much. Ask, it. ask him to explain the technique of his beautifully coiffured blonde hairdo. He had in 1998. I can also <laughs> explain the technique oh, for. I can also explain the. T well, the technique for that is you got the local hairdresser in Avignon or Saint Remy in the south of France, and they don't have any idea what you're saying, Stevie. And you try to tell them you want some blonde mullet. <laughs> and, so, and I can also I can also explain to you a very aggressive technique for kicking Moroccan players and getting sent <laughs> off. <laughs> what you do is, what you do is, when a guy goes past you, you swing your leading foot very hard uh, and intentionally high, thus, uh, thus stopping one's opponents in its tracks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you like, go. Like, Craig, though, how often do you think about that goal? Do you think about it like regularly? Oh, daily, yeah, daily. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm playing I know, golf, I think. I know there's no, some good sarcasm there, but I always wonder things like this. Uh, we don't think about it. No? Not until somebody brings it up, like this question here, then you remember. Yeah, no, it's not like I said thinking about it. I mean, it's, it was nice. I mean, it was really nice, to be honest, to be able to do that and be fortunate enough to score and play in World Cups. You know, to get a goal there was great. But, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't. It's happened. It's, it's, it's like the blonde hair and the red card. It's happened. It's, it's in the past. It was, it was nice at the time. It seems a long time ago. Holy smokes. Um, it was a that long was time ago, That was the World Cup, Craig. Craig, that was the World Cup where the Romanian team caused the commentators a complete nightmare because they decided they'd all dye their hair blonde. Um, and we were horrified because we had no real way of identifying them. And when they went out, um, I used the line and said, I think it's proof here that blondes don't always have more fun. <laughs> well, yeah, I wonder I... then if, if 1998 is off the list, because, Ian, the question for you is, you've covered several World Cups over the years. Which one was your all-time favourite to be at? Oh, no question about that at all. Italia 90, because it, there was such a passion around the country. I remember every time Italy played, um, there were vans going around with flags waving and horns blaring up until 4 a.m. in the morning. You, you had no chance of sleeping at all. So basically after every game, we just stayed out and um, <laughs> had a few drinks and went to bed when we could. I think we ended up one morning actually playing cricket with the hotel manager at 5 a.m. So it, it was that kind of World Cup. It was intoxicating. I don't think the football was great, but it was it was brilliant to cover and, and just be there. Is that the World Cup? That's that, that's the World Cup where apparently, and you may know this, Ian. I don't know. Apparently, some players and Bobby, sir, the late great Sir Bobby Robson, caught Paul Gascoigne playing 
an anonymous person at tennis in 90 degree heat 24 hours before it might have been the semi-final or the quarter-final and uh, they spotted him in the hotel tennis courts outside running around like a daft one and, got, and, and Gaza got really annoyed when he was told to stop by Bobby Robson because he said it was in the fifth set and he had a chance of winning. <laughs> <laughs> That's Gaza. He, I, I, Bobby called him daft as a brush, didn't he? But yeah. I think, you know, everyone I've ever spoken to who played with him absolutely loved him. Brushy's done all that daft. <laughs> daft as Gaza. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, was, that was the World Cup, wasn't it? Tears of a clown. All right, Craig, why hasn't Bale been linked to more competitive Premier League sides? In 2021, he scored 11 league goals, 16 total, when he was on loan for half a year for Spurs. He seemed motivated to perform before the Euros. I think, unfortunately, uh, reputation travels. Uh, I, I don't think there's many will doubt that he could come in and do a job. I suppose they may, behind the scenes, Kay, there could be some clubs talking to him about an incentivised short-term contract. But look, Bale's latter-day issues at Real Madrid have been well documented. Uh, and sometimes, and Stevie will know, having coached, uh, sometimes a manager doesn't always want that kind of player around. Not always, but sometimes. And I think that's probably just making putting a few more hurdles in his path. I'm sure he'll get something, but when managers are looking to save their, their bacon, and more, let's be honest, apart from a few, most of them are looking to save their bacon every season. You're looking for people that are going to go to the well for you. And that that's just not him at, at, at club level anymore. Are you surprised, Ian, that he's not been linked to more Premier League sides? Um, for the same reasons that Craig just itemised, I'm not that surprised. Um, there are stories linking him with the move to Roma, linking him with Jose Mourinho again. That would be uh, that would be quite interesting. I mean, the, the fact is that the World Cup starts in the middle of November. Wales are in it. He's the captain. He's the talisman. He has to play far more than he's played this season. Otherwise, he's just not going to be match up for the World Cup. So. That's going to be his number one priority. I just wonder whether a team like you know Fulham or Bournemouth or Nottingham Forest who are coming up into the Premier League, whether one of their managers might just think, you know what, I could use Gareth Bale. I, I could do with having him around. I know one manager who would have hired him, I'm pretty sure, and that would have been Harry Redknapp if he was still managing a Premier League club. But of course, he isn't. Yeah, well, we know it's not Hitafe, don't we, in La Liga. Yeah. He's, um, he's made that one very clear. Yep. Stevie, hey, listen, if, it... he wants to go to Not if he wants to go to Nottingham Forest, I'll take some of his potatoes, potatoes if he wants to go in my house. <laughs> That's it. Happy days. Gareth, if you're watching, there is a house that you can live in, ready-made, yeah. in the Nottingham area, so that you can go and play for Nottingham Forest. With, but he has, he, has to, he has to put up with my son and his girlfriend. There's the problem. No <laughs> Good luck. Good luck, says Stevie. As long Stevie. as I've got golf clubs, you're all right. Good All right, Stevie, was there any amount of money that would have convinced you to play for Manchester United? Probably not, no. Really? After being at Liverpool, no. 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 Nothing? No. So money doesn't talk in this, in this sense? No. No, not at all. Fair enough. Craig, what is it going to take for Scotland to return to international success? Is it time to hire John Hutchison as coach? Well, you'd have to ask Don what 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 Don's percentage uh, outlook was uh, on the chances of that happening. So, no, unfortunately, it's t unfortunately the Scotland scenario is taking more than good coaches. Stevie Clark did a, has done some great work at club level with tiny budgets. Thinking about Kilmarnock, tiny tiny budget. Uh, you've had. The late Walter Smith, who pretty much seen and done it all, worked with Ferguson, coached, you know, Champions League up to semi, all everything, Strachan, McLeish, ah, oh, the list goes on. <laughs> it's not, it's it's fundamentally a deeper rooted problem than coaching. I'm afraid. Pep Guardiola 
couldn't get Scotland in the World Cup. Is that bad? Well, it's it's just a fact. You've got to be realistic. And Scotland have to be realistic. All this, all this nonsense I've been hearing from Scotland about getting rid of Steve Clark. What do they expect Steve Clark to do? They don't have the players. Listen, you're getting outplayed by Ukraine. Technically. How is that down to the manager? The manager can do a lot of things. He can organise you, he can rally you up, he can get you going, he can put you in good positions for whatever talent you have and, 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 the, and put everybody as a unit and make them into, you know, a jigsaw. But ultimately, if they're at a level where they're, where they're not good enough to beat an opponent like Ukraine on a technical level, then you just don't have enough. So, as I said, Pep couldn't take Scotland to the World Cup. Never mind Steve Clark, so leave him alone. He's staying all right. Yeah, leave him alone. Oh. All right. For Stevie, what do you make of Wesley Snyder's comments about him saying he could reach the levels of Messi and Ronaldo, but he just loved wine too much and he didn't want to put the effort into it? Well, I think he'd probably had some wine when he came out with that. So I think that sort of says all you need to know. <laughs> he's probably sipping a glass of wine, or his sixth or seventh glass of wine, thinking that. Yeah. Where did that come from, anyway? Wesley Snyder. No, but yeah, but where did it come from, from Wesley? That's like that's like me saying, you know what? If I had liked Budweiser so much, I could have done what Wesley Snyder's done. No chance. Not a chance. He has said things like this before. What, what do you think? To be Ian? fair, to, to be Good fair, it's, it's like, that's like saying, you know, if Stevie wasn't so enthralled by buying his golf clubs on eBay for a cheap price, he could have been like Tiger Woods. <laughs> but that's he's not. true. I could have been like Tiger Woods. That's and by the way, you. yeah, and yeah, that's all stuff of me. I think three hundred bucks on eBay. What do you want? What do you want for three hundred bucks? That's what, hey, that's what, here's no. what he's not telling you. I don't buy them on eBay. He buys them on eBay for me. <laughs> he does all the dirty do you, work. Do you even know how to buy something on eBay? No, well, he does it for me. <laughs> Got well, my bottle here. I had my, I had my, <laughs> uh, I had my orders for a driver a couple of years ago. It was, had to be a, had to be a, a brand make, had to go like a rocket. <laughs> Extra yards had to be under a hundred bucks and have the right shaft. There we go. Oh, and I managed. I managed key. And do you know what? Yeah. What this? They got me. Do you know what this? No, I did. He hit it well, and then he then he decided See? he wasn't playing anymore. See? So wasn't thing like, wrong. He's, ha he's having a sabbatical. Uh, and they say, what is it they say? They say sometimes the Dutch carry themselves sometimes with a bit of arrogance. There's no sign of that here in Wesley Snyder, is there? <laughs> Bit of arrogance, could have been Messi and Ronaldo. I mean, goodness, good grief. You, you, you must have seen oh, him in his way. squad. <laughs> what? I was thinking of Wesley Snipes. <laughs> I, thought, I was thinking of Wesley, <laughs> Sny Wesley Snyder, the footballer. <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was the actor. Why would he I've say no idea. That? Well, that's why I said, why would he say that? That's why I said. That's, that's why I said. That's why I said. That's like me wanting to do what Wesley Snyder did. Did you not think that was a bit strange? I mean, you come out with a few things, and you so I just thought. Sorry, I was thinking of Wesley Snyder. Well, now you know it's with the Dutch midfielder Wesley Snyder. What do you think? I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm kind of. <laughs> I'm befuddled. Uh, just to reiterate, we're talking about Wesley Snyder, Ian, and not Wesley Snipes, the actor. You must have seen yes. Snyder in his prime. How far off do you think he was from the likes of Messi and Ronaldo? Well, I think Wesley Snyder, the actor, was a very fine midfield player. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Wesley What's Snyder was a, was a top class, you know, world class midfield player. Of course he was. You know, that um, team that got to the World Cup final. Um, yeah, great player, but. Hey, look, who's in the same class as Messi and Ronaldo? Almost nobody in history. So I think when he said that, like Stevie said, I think he might have had a couple of glasses of that wine, or either that or he's got a very vivid imagination. <laughs> well, hey, now that we're on the subject, name me a Wesley Snipes film. Come on. Go on. I couldn't. You could. I just know he was, he's, a, he's an actor. Was you, it, you has he not been involved with your films? Was it not, about, was it not one, one involved aeroplanes? 
Oh, um, um, um. Not, not Connie. Blade. No. He was in Blade. What else? Yeah, he was in Blade. Star of that. I can't believe we've got. I can't believe oh. we've sat here. And that that donut actually thought we were talking about Wesley Snipes. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Could have made me laugh for weeks, you know. I saw it, I saw it earlier and I thought, oh, Wesley Snipes. Oh, why did he say that? <laughs> but even so, how do you know that he wasn't a great footballer? <laughs> and he was a better actor, so that's what he decided to go into. Well, I mean, great footballers, you know, <laughs> would make good actors. And don't say Frank. Frank. Don't say Frank. <laughs> I said good actors. <laughs> oh, that's not nice. He's not here to defend himself. All right, Craig. Would you ever weigh yourself before and after the game? How exhausting is it to play a full game of competitive football? And also, does training ever come close to the real thing? Not really, no. But as it turns out, we used to weigh ourselves a lot at training years and years ago in the old days, before before all the uh, sports scientists and stuff. And you used to wear, I'm sure Stevie did as well, but we used to always have something in the old days called wet tops. and. They were basically, they would help you sweat during training. But it became apparent through people who knew what they were talking about that really you're, you're not losing weight. You're just dehydrating yourself at the time you're losing fluid. And you put it all straight back on, uh, usually after training. So I've seen guys wearing two or three of these. And hard, I, I know guys, uh, that used to wear two and three of these wet tops to, to try and lose weight, get a sweat on. They'd hardly run about. They would be lazy as hell, and then they'd be sweating after it. But and then they'd they'd be convinced that they'd lost like, oh, I've lost eight pounds today, and all that. And all you've done, all you've done is drained yourself of some fluid, and it all go, all goes back on. But but no, never before and after a game. No, no, you're either you're either in shape and ready to play, or you're out of shape and you're fat. I mean. It, you kind of know where you are. We, we all never got, got weighed at the start of the season. Yeah. That was it. And you, when you came back. But would you not get on the scales other than that? No. 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 There, would, there would always be a couple of guys who would always, just because of the way they are, would carry. Like when I got, when I got to Liverpool in, in 81, a guy called Ray Kennedy, who was a fantastic player, he used to train every day with a black bin liner under his gear. Yep. You know, they got they got a little more sophisticated in ten years later in Craig's Craig's decade with, with sweat tops. In the early eighties you used a black bin liner underneath all your gear. And and as he said, all it did was dehydrate you. It doesn't it take weight off? It dehydrates you and then you stand on the scales and you kid yourself on you've lost weight. But the next morning, when you're rehydrated, you're the same weight. Uh, yeah, a bin liner, also known as a trash bag. In Sorry, a trash bag. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Oops. Wait, 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 on the scales, my... please, Nico. On the scales. <laughs> well, that's the only thing <laughs> I'm thinking. If there's some Nicole. managers that have put you on a strict regime and you do have to make a certain hey, weight. Listen, would, hey, would nobody used to do that. What, what, what the hell do you think? Who's going who's gonna to get him in a strict regime? Who used to do that? You didn't. Let's be honest. You didn't need to do that. We, there was there was the odd guy who needed it, but generally everybody was fit as a fiddle. They weren't. They weren't. They were the odd ones out. The ones that had to be weighed, and anybody had to speak to them. My goodness, you're running about in your twenties. You, you're carrying nothing. Yeah, exactly. Fighting weight, right. King. Fighting weight at that fighting point. Fighting weight. Know what, I mean? what, um, was you, what was your fighting <laughs> weight? Ah. Uh, a lot less than it is now. I, I'm going to say, well, I'm guessing, I don't really know. 175? Is that a lot? What's that? This Ian's got to weigh in here. Yeah. Mine was, um, mine was 12 1. Well, commentators don't have to weigh in. Or, you know, nobody should give them that idea. Um, don't the players <laughs> now, they get weighed every week, don't they? Um, no, but if the if old days where you went away for the summer and, and, and went on the beach and ate, you know, French fries. And burgers all summer and let themselves down. I think that well, doesn't happen anymore. Well. They're weighed the whole time. Uh, no, but Ian, what would Craig have been fighting at at 175? Oh, sorry, what well, Craig? Oh, what did he say? 175? Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, sounds about oh, sort of right. Yeah, and a half. Thought, so that kind of weight wouldn't even maybe a bit less even maybe more well, like one. That's heavier than me. One so you're yeah, Frank, say, you're Frank, Frank Williams more than me. That's a bit twelve. One that's one seventy five is about what twelve and a half. So I was like half a stone lighter than him when I played. Yeah, but I'm taller than you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but fatter. I'm taller than you. <laughs> I, I would say one. I can't remember one seventy. Yeah, but between I think thinking back between somewhere always between twelve and twelve and a half stones in right. the old. In the old. Right? Yep. No money. Pounds. All right, Stevie. Why do you hate Jose Mourinho that much? I heard you laughing sarcastically when he was linked with the PSG job. He was successful in all the biggest leagues in Europe and he won the Champions League with Porto and Inter. So respect the greatest manager ever. The greatest manager ever, right. I don't, I don't hate Jose Mourinho. Just that he says an awful lot of things, right? And not everything he says is correct. A lot of things he says are, are correct, but a lot of things he said are complete and utter nonsense. So whenever he talks nonsense, then I just pull him up on it. I don't hate the guy. I, I just think that sometimes he, he just goes too far. You know, to, how, can you, how, can you, how can you take someone seriously, right? How can you take someone serious, I should say, who brags and tries to make out that the charity shield is some sort of uh, big trophy to be won? It's not. So you want me to take that serious? And clearly the guy who wrote this, this, this uh, sent this tweet in, thinks that winning the, the Charity Shield is anything. It's nothing. You know who was standout under Jose Mourinho during his win at Inter? Who? Wesley Snipes. Wesley Snipes. <laughs> Wesley Snipes, yeah. No, if, I'll tell you what. If he had got Wesley Snipes, to play as well as Wesley Snyder, then he would have been the best manager ever. Put it that way. But sadly... Not. Sadly, he did not. Uh, thanks Correct. so much for sending in your tweets uh, and for the giggles as well. Yeah, Wesley Snyder, not Wesley Snipes. Now, if we've, if we've got... i tell you what, if we've got anything about us now, we'll get Wesley Snipes on this show next week. Right? <laughs> right. There, you go. Yeah, <laughs> there you go, production team. There's your new assignment. Thanks so much for sending in your tweets. I will do it all again tomorrow. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.